fine. Today I'm joined by Ryan Crocker and Richie Cartmore from ANZ. Ryan and Richie, thanks so much for joining us. Could you please just start by um, telling us what title you have at ANZ? Yeah, sure. So I am the Yammer Community Manager, um, so kind of responsible for the, I guess, the kind of day-to-day -day stuff on Yammer. So monitoring the conversations, um, answering questions, kind of all the all the really fun stuff. <laughs> And Ryan? Uh, so my role is the social uh, social business development manager. Essentially, it means finding opportunities um, in different parts of the business where we can leverage Yammer to solve challenges um, and get business uh, drive business value. Great. So for us in Australia and around the APAC region, ANZ is a household name. But can you explain for those outside the APAC region what ANZ is, please? We're one of Australia's big four banks. We operate in 32 different markets across the globe um, and have um, a, a, around about 40,000 employees globally as well. Right. So I know you guys have been using Yammer for quite a few years, but I would love to know how you've been using it during the COVID pandemic. Yammer really um, went berserk during COVID. Um, it's absolutely been kind of, it's, it's the busiest we've ever seen it. Um, and it was for a few reasons, kind of one, I think COVID came on, it came on very quickly and we rapidly had to change the tools that we were using, the way that we were working. People were hungry for information. So um, although I was away at the time, um, Ryan got together, I think with the comms team and created groups in separate categories to try and funnel the information. Because what we saw is people were asking a lot of questions. There was information and updates people needed to know um, and there was also tips and tricks that people were sharing. So we broke up three into three Yammer groups in three different categories, one being tips and tricks group, two being things you need to know um, and three in with the Q&A community as well. We kind of set the expectation that look, we know there's going to be so many questions and we're not going to have all the answers and we're probably not going to be able to respond to everybody. So we actually had daily webcasts with our CEO. Um, and so how it worked is Yammer was kind of the place you would go to to have, ask a question. We would review that each day um, and that, that, that would wrap up into Shane's webcast so that we can say, look, we, we can't get everything, but here's the common questions coming through. So this is what we're going to cover. Um, and then we actually shared the links to join the webcast via that Q&A community as well, again, by announcement. Um, mm. and, and because we knew that was so important to everybody in, um, in the, you know, in, uh, in Australia, that those webcasts were for. So we bulk uploaded them and pushed out the notifications and, and got them all, um, and got them all um, engaged that way. What was the engagement like having the CEO give a daily briefing, I guess, and answering questions daily? It was huge. Um, again, like Ryan mentioned before, we saw a huge uptake in mobile logins. And I think on our top day, we had 14,000 people log in. Um, wow. They didn't all engage, but it's it's a very, very high number um, of logins considering, again, we have about 40,000 people. So how are you finding the divide between when people know when to work on Teams and when they move over to Yammer? What we're trying to do is we're trying to, I think, explain it in a way that people are working out loud on Yammer. So this is the public place you come to talk about the work that you're doing, to connect with people that you may not connect with on a day-to-day -day basis, but Teams is the place you actually go and get your work done with your direct team. And that's going to look different for so many different people. There's going to be different team sizes depending on um, where you're kind of located or what division you're in. But yeah, Teams is going to be the closed place that you come. You can have chat on there like it's replacing Skype. You can have SharePoint on there. You can have Planner on there. It's the place you get your work done, you collaborate. But when you're ready to step out publicly or you need a question answered um, that somebody in your direct team doesn't know, Yammy is the place to go. You were both talking about uh, the Q&A forum on Yammer and you said that leaders will jump in there and start to answer questions. <laughs> You know, we deal with a lot of um, organisations around the world who are 
using Yammer. There's not that many that have, you know, executives and CEOs and leaders that are jumping in answering those questions. Can you tell me a little bit, you know, do they actually go in and read posts and, uh, you know, reply to them, reassure mm. people? Is it community building? We didn't actually need to prompt them to jump in and reply to conversations. What was really good about the Q&A community is that we had um, our CEO, Shane, and our deputy CEO, Alexis George, just sort of naturally jumping into the conversation. Um, I think a number of times they um, they did posted proact proactively to, you know, just let everybody know that, you know, this, you know, um, to show that solidarity and that emotional support for people, which I think was really important. Um, obviously we prompted them to do that sometimes, but then they also did it off their own back. Um, and then they responded really well to, to questions as well, which we, we didn't expect them and we didn't want to set the expectation that they were going to go in and reply to everything. Um, so we in the Yammer team sort of played a role of making sure that people were having their questions answered as much as possible. But actually um, Shane and Alexis were, you know, probably in there um, every day replying yeah. to people and um, giving them information, reassuring them. And it was really amazing. It was like a direct two-way connection with um, with the CEO and the deputy CEO during a really crazy um, um, and, and scary time for people as well. So I think it was just such a powerful way for them to stay connected um, and, you know, to connect connected to our people. And what was the response from your people to having that, I guess, that direct connection with the CEO and deputy CEO? The fact that there were so many questions and so much engagement in that community speaks to the fact that people found it valuable because they were having that genuine engagement with leaders. Um, so, you know, I think it was, I think it was very much appreciated. And it just sort of felt like it was, um, like really embedded and integrated as part of the way that we were working and communicating with one another. So, you know, we would never have, there would never be a webcast with employees and, and Shane or Alexis without mention of a Yammer conversation. I was thinking of one example, um, which I know Ryan, we've spoken about quite a few times. Um, Alexis did a poll um, and it was quite informal, um, but she kind of asked the question, um, what do you think about returning to work? How often would you be keen to return to the office? And again, it was Australia focused, but she got over 4,000 votes on the poll, wow. which is a, an incredible result. And it, and it kind of showed that, um, again, there's been really engaging conversations, but her asking that quick question, I think she got over 100 replies as well. People really wanted to give their mm -hmm. feedback. And um, I think that's really gone a long way in um, showing maybe some other leaders or um, other people around the bank that this is a place that people want to give their feedback, they want to be heard. Um, and it was it's one of the better polls I've seen. Well, ANZ's been uh, one of our top performing companies in the Swoop Yemma benchmarking, which is benchmarking globally. So we know that you guys are one of the most mature Yemma networks in, in the world. And you know, this sort of executive engagement obviously is part of it and, and got you there. But I guess um, it, it's not new that you that your leaders are involved in this. So, you know, I guess this has been a time of crisis. So I guess all that training pre-COVID maybe comes into play here. But how, what's the key? How did you guys get executives and all your leaders onto Yemma and engaging and connecting with people? And how have you maintained that as well? I wouldn't say it hasn't been a lot of work. I think we've, we've work, really worked towards it. And I think um, certainly Swoop has helped with that. Um, I know personally before Swoop, I don't think we even thought about the one, two, three rule. Um, but that's come through a lot, I think, in kind of leadership coaching and plans where people don't know how to get started. Um, I think as an organisation on our previous network, um, some people were used to having posts written for them, um, weren't always comfortable to share their own opinions. So actually coaching them and encouraging them to have an opinion, um, share what they're thinking and don't be afraid to just jump in um, and engage was really important. And also then looping back and showing them what impact it's had. So whether it's their network growing or the responses or how before when maybe they had a post written for them, they didn't get many responses versus them actually doing it on the phone when they're thinking about something, you can see that increasing the engagement. And it kind of, 
I think it kind of snowballs from there. Once they see the impact that it's had, um, they don't necessarily have to think about a, a one, two, three rule. It just becomes natural. So showing them the data has actually, I guess that appeals to bankers anyway. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. But that that has that alone has increased engagement, you think? Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, we can talk and talk and talk, but unless you can sometimes show people data and show them exactly the impacts that they've had or the spread that their, their voice has had across the network, um, mm -hmm. that's what people want and they don't always get it. So when we can actually show them, um, they love it. Yeah. That's really true. And I think um, the other part of it is kind of acting as their coach um, and kind of like their men leader, a mentor rather than sort of driving it for them. Um, and I think what really works is helping people and leaders in particular understand that Yammer really is a listening tool. It's not a you know, it's not a broadcast tool. That's kind of what email is for if you want to do a broadcast message, it is really a, a way to build genuine relationships with people and to listen in, find out what's on people's minds. Um, and, and that's what, you know, leadership is. It's, it's all about having conversation with people, building trust and building relationships. And that's kind of what we try to do um, with leaders when we do things like um, you know, maybe a webcast or a town hall or a video message. But those channels, and those channels are great, but they're either one way or not scalable. So what Yammer provides is that scalable connection that you can't you can't eat with anything else. So it's um, it, it just adds so much value. Um, so once you, you can convince people of that and give them the confidence, and then they start to see the data and the impact that they're having, um, that really, really has a big impact. I know in the past, Ryan, you've said that you can sniff out a corporate comms post anytime and people just do not respond to it. But when yeah. you've got that leader giving an authentic, genuine post, the responses just come flooding in. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. Um, it's it's very very true. We do get feedback from some of our leaders that you know that they're not getting the engagement perhaps that they'd like to see on um, on posts. And and quite often when we go back through this work data and look at sort of okay, well, what are the conversations you've had that have been really engaging, and what are the conversations you've had recently that have been not so engaging? And and nine times out of ten, the stuff that's not engaging is when you know usually when they've been prompted by somebody to post um, because maybe there's an initiative or a campaign or something that we're trying to push down on to people. Um, but the stuff that's engaging is when it's something that's relevant right now, whether it's something happening external um, in our broader environment that may impact us at ANZ or something happening within our organisation that impacts us, but it's relevant for people. Um, and it has some kind of personal story or or interesting insight that comes directly from that leader and as a comms person you can't you, you, unless you you're inside somebody else's head like you can't yeah. come up with that it really um has to come from the person themselves um yeah well a great example you've shared previously is uh when shane elliott your ceo asked about uh, reducing uh, waste and use the example of um, disposable coffee cups, I think it was. And you got huge engagement yes. from that, didn't you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that was that was amazing. So that was in our um, environmental sustainability community. So um, Shane had just been in a leadership conference and one of the things that we're discussing is how we can move towards being a more sustainable organisation. Um, and sort of without prompting, he's like, oh, well, we've got a sustainability community, community on Yammer. Why don't I ask them? Um, and so he had an idea um, and uh, shared his idea and then asked people for what their ideas were about being more sustainable. And it led to a whole um, conversation with stacks of ideas being shared. It, and it sort of went beyond that conversation. So there were some initiatives, like they changed the signage on the bins to make it clearer as, as to what goes where, what you can recycle and what you can't, um, as that was one of the ideas that was raised and then that was changed. But also it kind of led to this culture where, um, you know, in the months following, 
people were kind of going to events and things and, and calling each other out when that's really? in a positive way when they'd seen you know some promotional um you say you know how you get those you might get a pen or a badge or a fan or something and it's all plastic junk that you keep for two days and throw away um so there are lots and lots of people going to events and conferences and then showing posting and saying hey why are we doing this if we're trying to be more sustainable let's stop you know introducing single-use plastic that someone's just going to throw in the bin like how can we do this better um so it left a bit of a, a legacy i suppose as well yeah, that's incredible. So one post asking a question and it's really resulted in change for the planet. <laughs> Not yes. just the bank. Yes. <laughs> I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I loved that you, when you were talking earlier about using the data and showing that to leaders, you were saying, you know, the data tells the story um, and gives those facts. So has the data from Swoop helped, um, I guess, encourage some of the right behaviours on Yemma? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I, we've kind of been running in it for a while now. We we do run Swoop training sessions where we actually invite anybody along to kind of learn about um, all the different tabs and um, the different measures they can look at. And I certainly think, I think the uh, persona widget can be a, a bit of a wake up call for people sometimes because for quite a while we've spoken about broadcasters, but maybe not open publicly or we don't always talk about it in, in Yammer. So actually showing people the persona that they have kind of helps them review what they've been doing and for I think everyone would know but for those that don't if you're a broadcaster you've probably been posting in groups and not getting much response and it's usually people that are involved in initiatives and they're trying to get the word out there but they just go and sometimes they spam too many groups and they don't make it relevant for the right community so when we can actually show them and say this is your activity over the last three six twelve months this is the persona you've been given um, they can look at that and say oh was there a campaign i did that i didn't get any response on and something that you've recently added is actually you're able to view the posts um, that don't have any responses or any interactions with them so we've actually recently done a tip about that and um, a few people have commented saying that will actually show us the posts that have not hit the nail on the head what do we need to change and sometimes they'll come to us and say what do we need to do differently it could be adding a picture it could be making it shorter it could be making it more relevant to the community so absolutely um, that swoop data really kind of helps people and so do you encourage every employee to jump onto the swoop dashboard and have a look at their personal behaviors yes yes we do we've actually got it linked as a company resource in all company so um, we encourage anybody to use it we've also had um, which has got to be quite recently just because of everything happening, but we've had Yammer of the week and we've made sure um, that we always refer back to Swoop. So we refer to the persona and we refer to the good activities that they've done and it'll often say at the end, if you want to check out how you're going, jump onto Swoop. And we haven't hidden anything um, apart from benchmarking so they can see everything all the topics, all the public communities and the whole enterprise to actually see and inspect across the bank what is working really well and how they can kind of adapt their collaboration style based on that. Oh, great. And have you seen changes resulting from people going in there and, you know, deliberately wanting to change their online behaviours? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, certainly when we have communities come along, gen hope generally they'll set a goal and um, I'm thinking about one kind of team in particular um, they actually have a quarterly report now um, which actually goes and gathers that data and they actually sent, set benchmarks for themselves so they report back to their leadership on how each of the leaders are doing and the most popular conversations and what worked really well um, for their team so that's just kind of one example. What Swoops ha helps us do is if there is somebody that is a, perhaps using Yammer in the most effective way or if they come to us with a challenge or a, a conversation that they want to try to ha encourage or drive on the platform we can talk to them and sort of say right well who is your intended audience and what's the conversation that you want to have what's the outcome that you want to get and then swoop we can sort of go down into that okay we can actually look at their audience see what their behavior is on yammer in terms of which communities they engage in who's influential what do they talk about what engages them versus what doesn't engage them and you can build a whole, whole yammer plan or yammer strategy with that being informed by that data and we've had feedback from stakeholders 
that have come back to us and said this has totally changed the way we thought Yammer worked. Well, guys, hearing that and hearing that the change, the changes that Swoop has helped create for the better for your whole organisation, because at the end of the day, I guess by sharing this information, it re results in a better product for your ANZ customers. That's what we're all in the business to do. So yeah. thank you so much for sharing your story and spending the time on Swoop Chat with me. No worries. No worries. No worries.